so my interest in this, I'm in computing at uh, UE Bristol. Uh, my interest in this stems from a few years back, we developed a uh, self-help app for mental health uh, called SAM, which is now in its second iteration. Um, uh, developed with colleagues uh, using a sort of UX user-centered design process. Um, and we now have a, an entity which manages the app as a spin-out, but not quite the kind of spin-out that my university would really like to have, not one that makes millions of pounds, but one that could just look after it day to day. Um, we've done a bit of research on the app, uh, starting with looking at engagement patterns of the user base, uh, finding that there's this massively long tail of attrition that you get with apps tends to happen, uh, but also that there's some specific kind of interaction groups, people behave differently within the app. Uh, so that was published in JMIR. We're now doing research around personalization because this is an area that we feel needs examination. Uh, there's often a sort of a priori assumption that better personalization will lead to more engagement and better impact. But when you actually look at the evidence for this, it's not really that clear. So we feel that needs more, uh, more work. Um, so the question is really, is uh, personalization really better for engagement and outcomes than things like uh, collaborative filtering, so just using the community's favorites to rank the self-help. Um, so scoping review around this, which is coming out soon, behavior and information technology. Um, and yeah, as we say, evidence is mixed. There's not been any really good uh, 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 reviews on this. Um, so we are currently doing a multi-arm trial looking at adaptive personalization as one arm but comparing that to more sort of broad brush community-based ranking and my colleague Clem who's here is working on that and managing a study so if you want to talk to her about that she's available. Um, possible collaboration around this is we have a sort of uh, customizable flexible content uh, publishing system so I'd be happy to talk to anyone who might be interested in uh, tailoring content for specific audiences. Uh, you could then uh, customize the app to give to particular groups. Uh, because we have research opt-in when users sign up, we have a, a base of people who are prepared to take part in, in studies. So that's one area that I wanted to talk about. The second one, which I'm just starting to get into, is uh, chatbots. Uh, I find this really interesting from a sort of an ethical perspective as much as anything and a sort of human AI interaction perspective. Uh, the fact that these are burgeoning now, lots of people are already using them. We've got to sort of figure out what the hell's going on. We've got to embrace the reality. Um, there's this concept of the ELISA effect. I don't know if you know about ELISA. It was one of the first chatbots back in the, the 70s, I think it was. Uh, that was very simple, very sort of automated script that just sort of repeated back what the client was saying, but people actually found it really engaging, really immersive, and people thought it helped them. Um, so what we're doing around this at the moment is a small-scale study, uh, fine-tuning some different language models based on real uh, therapist client uh, questions and answers. And we're just blind testing that with students to say, do you find this response supportive? How supportive do you find this uh, response? Um, and we're finding that the language models are performing surprisingly well, uh, although the human therapist is still the best rated answer. Thank God. <laughs> the, uh, the, two of the language models are producing responses that are mostly rated as very supportive by the, by the subjects. So this is a quite an interesting finding, I think. Um, happy to talk to anyone who's interested in this work, uh, scaling it up, different kinds of models, uh, maybe a model with a memory or uh, building a model of the interlocutor. Um, yeah, and the whole area of AI human interaction is, is fascinating. Should these bots be uh, imitating people or should they be something a bit different? Should we be keeping a mental distance from who we're talking to? That's me, thank you.